I am what they call the Supervisor of Correctional Education Program at Centennial State Prison in Imperial, California, which is probably 120 degrees today. So I am happy to be in Long Beach. Um, and so we're going to talk about um, global competence in prison and, and this idea of expanding the minds of incarcerated individuals. Um, and from what I see as being the missing ingredient to actually battling recidivism and providing uh, students inside these correctional institutions with uh, something that when they get out they don't feel they have something to lose. You know, I think that the biggest thing for me, the, I make a lot of decisions based on uh, how much I have to lose. So whether I'm nervous, angry, scared, whatever, the decision I make is based on, well, am I Dr. Lincoln Johnson or am I just Link, right? So I think that uh, for our students, that's something that we have to do. So who am I? My favorite topic. We could just stay on this slide forever. Had some, had some God. All right, so it's all in style now to be from Compton. I grew up 10 minutes away from here in uh, Compton, California. It's funny because when I was growing up, about two blocks from my house where I grew up, there's a sign, Welcome to Compton. So when people would say, you, you live in Compton, they say, no, 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 no. I live in unincorporated LA. The sign is two blocks away. <laughs> but now it's in style to be from Compton, so I can say, I grew up in Compton, I went to School in Compton, kindergarten, 12th grade. My mother, I come from a family of educators. My mother, grandfather, uncles, aunts, cousins, everybody's a teacher, so I grew up hating teachers. I could not enjoy, like, Christmas, because you'd be sitting at the table in third grade and somebody just go, what's nine times eight? I don't know. <laughs> this ain't school, it's like Christmas Day, right? And so I grew up hating teachers, and I would, take, I would go back to school in January and take it out on teachers. I would just be the worst class clown, get sent to the um, principal, and back in those days they could hit you. So I got hit a lot by a lot of teachers and, and principals. But this is important because what I noticed growing up, um, the students that we work with inside the correctional institutions have about a two mile radius in their head. Because if you're part of a gang, if you uh, live in a low socioeconomic area, you don't really venture far. There are kids in North Long Beach that have never been to the beach in Long Beach, right now. Um, another thing, another reason are the, the walls and barriers and bars and, that exist in the neighborhoods. I had an opportunity to take uh, some of my coworkers and friends to the neighborhood where I grew up. So we did a hood tour. And we went to uh, Watts South Central Compton, we went to the house where I grew up, and, it's amazing to see how everything is fenced in. Now imagine as a kid, you're growing up in the projects, there's a fence around the projects, you rarely ever leave. So these um, middle class ideas of going to Disneyland and all that stuff, you might as well be telling them to go on a safari to Africa. And you're talking about Disneyland, which is 30 minutes away. So they don't really have the foresight or the experience to do that. Now, the difference between myself and them I grew up with an educator, so every summer we get in a big yellow station wagon, and that was back before the um, seatbelt laws, and so I'd be back in the back back, is what we called it, and we'd drive all over the country. We would just get on the road and drive. I've seen all 50 states from the back of that yellow station wagon. So we'd stop at like the KOA campground, you know, when somebody would spray paint like KKK on it, and we'd be scared to death, but my parents would have us there. And one thing that um, my parents would do is we would go see every college. So whatever city we were in, we'd go see, if we were in a capital city, we'd go see the capital building, and we'd go see the colleges. So as a young man growing up in Compton, I thought college was mandatory. You know, so when I got to high school and kids were talking about um, finishing school, we were like, no, no, you still got to go to college. No, stupid. You don't have to go to college. But by then it was too late. I was already on a path. I was already on a path. So I say all that to say that I was fortunate in that I had those experiences. I mean, even to the extreme where I remember being six and being in Orlando, Florida, and I would just walk off, you know, go venture off by myself. They got never got kidnapped or anything. But I, I always asked my parents, you know, well, did you guys care? I know I was the youngest, but I mean, you wanted me to get lost in these cities because I would just walk off. And so 
it gave me a different view, different types of people, different situations, um, different types of danger. But I don't think that the, the students that we deal with don't have that. You may see some of them that have that. Most of them are stuck inside the fence, not only in their neighborhood, but in their minds. That's why they feel so comfortable in prison. That's why they come back. We'll get to that later. Now, what happened, I, I, uh, what changed me as a person and what made me get on this, uh, this road that I'm on with globalization was I went to the University of Southern California. That's where I got my doctorate in um, educational leadership. And at the University of Southern California, they have this Asia Pacific Rim International Study Experience. Now, of course, I went to USC because I did not like the overrepresentation of black and brown men in special education. I thought that we heard the other day that 33% of the inmates, you know, in, in uh, DJJ have some type of special ed thing. And I think it's more than that because in, in the neighborhoods where I grew up, you beat your kids. So if you were hearing voices, your mother beat that out of you. You knew to not tell anybody you were hearing voices. So there could be more than that. We just don't know because there's no identification. It's not going to happen. We don't, that's not something that we... A lot of, but anyway, I went there to study that, and I met a man, uh, Dr. Mark Robeson, and he said, you know, you, you're looking at a small group of people in a small population. Why don't you, like, think about the world? That, that these problems exist all over the world. So I was fortunate enough with him to go to uh, Taiwan and South Korea. I went to mainland China and Hong Kong, and we just visited schools and um, looked at how uh, the special education programs, and I got stuck on this idea of globalization, right? It expanded my mind. I became a different person. I started seeing the world as a world, and I realized that, dang, I, in my head, I've got this two-mile radius too, right? And so it just kind of expanded my worldview and introduced me to this idea of being world-class, worldwide, right? Um, I, growing up in the neighborhood, you know, my mother was a principal in the neighborhood where I grew up. And so, in addition to kid, not have, being able to go to the park when I was a teenager because my mother took somebody's snicker, so they brought all their brothers and sisters to come beat me up. You know, I'll go buy you a snicker, right? But she would dress me very differently than the gang. So she knew all the gangs. You, you can't wear dickies. You can't wear a t-shirt. You can't wear anything red or blue. So I was wearing dockers before it was cool. And no belts, right? I couldn't wear a belt, so I had like elastic waistband pants. I wore like pro wing shoes, no shoe strings with the Velcro. This is how my mother dressed me, you know, and, and you know, so she, uh, she would wear, okay, so I love Lacoste now with the alligator because she would buy me these shirts with like dragons and frogs and tigers on it. So I'm just at school getting bagged on every day, you know? What are you wearing? You know? You know? I look like, uh, you know, someone from a, you know, some tourist. <laughs> so um, it was. It would be very hard for me to identify as a gang member in that type of attire, right? So now, now I take extreme pleasure in being able to dress myself. <laughs> but that's the, that I did. She gave me that idea, so it made me think differently. It made me start thinking about how I identify myself, how I look, how I dress, what things I do, and, and like I said, it led me to this idea of being world class, worldwide. Thank you. All right. Well, let's talk about where I come from. So, Centinella State Prison is um, <coughs> was activated in October 1993. Last month, or just a few weeks ago, our population was 3,649, with approximately 1,250 staff, about 750 um, custody staff, and 500 non-custody staff. We have custody levels three and four, so we have uh, two. Level four general population facilities. We have a level three general population facility and a level three sensitive needs yard. And then we also have a minimum support facility, our level one outside the secure perimeter. And then we have our administrative segregation unit. So at any time, we can have up to 1,746 students in academic and vocational programs, long waiting lists. Um, we have uh, six very successful voluntary education program to deal with those students who are not in school that would either want to be or somehow got tracked in our direction. All right, so let's talk about global competence. So because it's early and it's the last day and I feel your pain, uh, let's do so, let's work together. So I'd like for us to get into groups of like two or three. 
And then I want you to look around yourself. And you're going to, with the paper that you have, you're just going to write down the countries that some of the stuff came that you believe or think or know that some of the things that you have coming. So look, you know, look in your bags, your purses, your pockets, and everything. Some of the stuff will say that. Your, your clothes, if you're comfortable with the person next to you touching you and looking at your, 